I visited Louisville, Kentucky on June 26th and 27th, 2021. Just for the record, I didn't see any cousins kissing each other and I didn't see anyone with missing teeth. Nonetheless, I split up the city and Jefferson County into 13 sections where I'll be able to show the entire city within a series of just over a dozen videos. In this series of videos, you'll see all of the good and all of the bad. So why not share a fifth of bourbon with your best butter gal and come along to see the entire city of Louisville, Kentucky. For this video, I go through three suburbs and four different zip codes, some of the richest zip codes in the state at that. This area is not what most people think of when they have Kentucky in mind. This video will be a section of the city that is, of course, on the east side of town as all things that are nice and Louisville seem to be on the east side. All of the people with money want to buy houses on this side and all of the nice stores want to open up their nicest stores on this side of town. For example, there's only one Apple store that serves Kentuckiana and you'll find it right here in this section of the city that I'm about to drive through. You can imagine that the lines at that store are as long as the ones at the Mexico border. Nonetheless, Louisville has its fair share of snobby rich folks and in this video you'll see some of the fancy neighborhoods that these Louisville snobs live in. I do start the video at the Parklands of Floyd's Fork, which might be the nicest park that I've seen in all of Louisville. Iroquois Park is pretty nice on the southwestern part of the city, but just like everything on the east side, this one is seemingly the best. It's nice and big and has several longer biking and hiking trails in plenty of green space. Seems just right for all the snobby rich folks in this area. I'll show more of the park in a later video, but for now, it's time to scoff at all these rich people. They don't deserve to be rich. Ha, huh, what an absolute loser. You must be one of those who beg for government handouts. Ah, this guy again. Didn't uh, catch my sarcasm, I see. Boy, that would be a miserable way to live, feeling jealous of ones who are more successful and feeling like they owe you something. Most of them have worked hard for their money, so don't hate on them, people. Nonetheless, if you enjoy this video, make sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already, as doing all of those things helps these videos destroy the evil monster that is the YouTube algorithm. Also, make sure to hit that notification bell so that you can be notified every time that I upload a new video. If you enjoyed this video, then you might enjoy checking out some of the featured playlists on this channel. Videos with amazing insights on other places like what you see here can be found in my Louisville playlist or in my Kentucky playlist. Last but not least, if you can't get enough of me on here, you can always go follow me on my other social media accounts, and those links are below. Where we are currently is about 14 miles east from downtown Louisville, and out this way things might begin to look a little bit rural, but that mostly comes from the windy roads and the large patches of woods here and there. In the first part of this video, we'll be driving through the 40245 zip code, and you can see it outlined here. The zip code covers a large area of land east of the Gene Snyder Freeway, extending out towards the Jefferson County border. If you've watched my previous videos, you've heard me talk about the annexation between Louisville and the unincorporated areas of Jefferson County back in 2003. Until then, this area wasn't a part of the Louisville city limits. Today, the city of Louisville is able to collect all the tax dollars from all these wealthy folks. Good for them. The 40245 zip code is home to 34,000 residents and the median household income is $113,000 per year. 60% of adults 25 and older hold a bachelor's degree or higher, and the median value of owner-occupied housing units is $341,000. The poverty rate is a low 4%. This is the Lake Forest community. Seems pretty nice, but it also seems like one of those fancy neighborhoods that has its own private Facebook group that the residents will flock to anytime they see anything unusual going on, like a guy driving around with a camera on top of his car, or someone driving through with some loud music. Oh man, that 
that was a lot louder than I thought it would be. Uh, the police are probably called on me now, and I better not stop too long at these stop signs. Better get going. Anyway, this place does look nice, but you already know just by looking that it's not without its HOA fees and neighborhood rules. Seems like there's a whole website for the community and it's at lakeforestky.com if you want to know more. Oh man, you already know it's a fancy place if one of the streets in your neighborhood is called Arnold Palmer Boulevard. It's actually named that way because this is a community that was built around an Arnold Palmer designed golf course. We're still in the 40245 zip code. Now, the median household income numbers are always changing for cities, neighborhoods, and zip codes, but according to the website called louisvillehomesblog.com, the 40245 zip code is the fourth highest on the Kentucky side of the Louisville metro area. I bet that if Indiana were counted, then it would still be the fourth highest, as the Indiana side of the region isn't necessarily Beverly Hills.
And here's another fancy subdivision, looks like this one is called Woodmont. We're also not that far away from the Jefferson County border. It looks like this neighborhood is pretty close to the Gene Snyder Freeway which gives you quick access to most of the other freeways. It's also not too far from a nice selection of amenities as you have your basic needs met with some shopping at a nearby freeway exit which will go by in only a few minutes. You also have access to more shopping amenities about 10 minutes south. Here it's going to look like we're out in the sticks again as the road is windy and narrow and it goes through patches of woods. We're not completely out in the sticks though, mostly just on the outskirts of Metro Louisville. Here we turn southwest heading back towards the city. You can start to see some shopping complexes, but hidden behind some trees to the right up ahead is a large Ford assembly plant. If you drive a Ford Escape from the 2013 model year and up, or if you drive a 2020 Lincoln Corsair, it was made at this plant. You can't see it from the road, but I'll be showing it in a later video that I have coming up where I'll go through the section of Louisville that's in the far northeastern corner of the city. Depending on when you see this video, that video might already be up. Go ahead and make sure to check my Louisville playlist. To the right up ahead is the city limits of Anchorage. If you've been following along in my Louisville series, you'll know that Jefferson County is full of tiny municipalities such as Anchorage. Anchorage is home to about 2,400 residents. From its beginning days through now, it's always been a place where wealthy folks have lived. The founder of Papa John's Pizza, John Schnatter, is actually a resident of Anchorage. Soon I will be in the larger suburb of Middletown, but once I crossed underneath the Gene Snyder, I entered the 40223 zip code. The 40223 zip code is home to 23,000 people, and the median household income is $84,000 per year. 57% of adults 25 and older hold a bachelor's degree or higher, and the median value of owner-occupied housing units is $262,000. The poverty rate is a low 3%. The zip code is pretty small in comparison to other nearby zip codes, but here is a map of the coverage area of the 40223 zip code.
Now we're in the suburb of Middletown, and it's one of the larger suburbs within Jefferson County. The land that the town sits on today was originally owned by Revolutionary War veteran Jacob Myers. All the way back in 1797, Middletown was chartered as a city, and it's largely believed that the name of the place came from the fact that it was located between the other two cities at the time of Louisville and Shelbyville. In the 1950s, Middletown lost its original charter, but it was able to reincorporate as a city in 1979. Here you can see the population history of Middletown. Today, Middletown is home to 9,700 residents and the median household income is $75,000 per year. 45% of adults 25 and older hold a bachelor's degree or higher, and the median value of owner-occupied housing units is $215,000. The poverty rate is higher than I thought it would be, as it's at 11%. I was thinking personally that the poverty rate would be in the single digits. Anywho, Niche.com gives the public schools a B+. Violent crime hardly happens here according to the data, and the property crime rates are below average. Middletown really just looks like a leafy, quiet suburb. Plenty of trees all over the place and plenty of amenities off of Shelbyville Road. We just crossed that thoroughfare back there and just seems like a nice, quiet place, honestly. To the right is Eastern High School, home of the Eagles. Enrollment counts at Eastern hover around 2,000 students per year. Niche.com gives the high school an A, so that's pretty good, especially when compared to other Louisville area high schools. Among the most notable alumni is late actor Ned Beatty, musician John Cohen, podcaster and 2004 Miss Tennessee Ashley Eicher, founder and CEO of Rubicon Technologies Nate Morris, former NBA player Felton Spencer, and two-time NBA champion Rajan Rondo attended Eastern up until his junior year of high school. And here you can see some more neighborhoods, a part of Middletown. All of Middletown is a part of the slightly larger 40243 zip code, which is home to 10,500 residents, and the median household income is $75,000 per year. 46% of adults 25 and older hold a bachelor's degree or higher, and the median value of owner-occupied housing units is $222,000. The poverty rate is a low 6%. That poverty rate is a pretty big gap from Middletown, so the stats on that might be a little bit off. Stats are kind of weird right now to find because of the 2020 census numbers just coming out, and economically, a lot of databases are still basing things off of 2019 dollars as they're hesitant to count 2020-2021 dollars due to the craziness of the pandemic and everything, so don't bag on me too much for that one.
There's really not too many roads to just head straight through east and west, north and south through the Louisville metro area. If you're going to go to a lot of places and you're going to live, especially on the east side, just know that going in that you're going to have to make a lot of stops, a lot of turns, wait a lot of traffic lights, and you're going to have to take it slow on these residential roads as once again, not too many through roads in this part of Louisville or much of Louisville for that matter. This is Douglas Hills, which is slightly bigger than most of the other small home rule class cities that make up Jefferson County. Douglas Hills is home to 5,400 residents with very similar economic stats as the other nearby areas. The median household income is about $74,000 per year, and the median value of owner-occupied housing units is $256,000. And to the left here is Jefferson Town, but I go through Jefferson Town in a later video, so I'll talk more about it then. And back here, just more of the same thing that we've been seeing this whole video. And this looks like another fancy subdivision with a lot of newer homes with an HOA fee probably and also probably some unwritten rules.
We are now in the suburb of Linden, which we will be in for a very brief moment. It's home to 11,000 residents and the median household income is $57,000 per year. 44% of adults 25 and older hold a bachelor's degree or higher, and the median value of owner-occupied housing units is $191,000. The poverty rate is 8%. Niche.com gives the public schools a B-, and the crime rates are below average. This is the Shelby Hurst campus of the University of Louisville. It's mainly a space for businesses and offices, however it is home to the Center for Predictive Medicine along with the Information Technology Resource Center for the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. If you've watched some of my other Louisville videos, you'll remember me saying that Churchill Downs, the racetrack, is owned by Churchill Downs Incorporated, and their offices are located here. Before all of this office development, this site was once home to Kentucky Southern College, which operated as a Southern Baptist Liberal Arts College from 1961 to 1969. And as you can see here, there's even more suburban-like office developments away from the Shelby Hurst campus. And we have finally made it to Hurstbourne, one of the snobbiest areas of all of Louisville. That was a joke, guys, but not really. But yeah, anyway, okay, but uh, yeah, in all honesty, it's one of the wealthiest cities in all of Kentucky. 
Hurstbourne is home to 4,400 residents and the median household income is $123,000 per year. 70% of adults 25 and older hold a bachelor's degree or higher, and the median value of owner-occupied housing units is $421,000. The poverty rate is only 1.8%, and Niche.com ranks the public schools as only a B. Usually, cities of this stature would have an A or an a ranking on Niche.com. However, the crime is basically non-existent here, as both the violent and property crime rates are incredibly low. The name Hurstborn comes from a combination of two words. The word Hurst means a grove of trees and Born means boundary. The community was mostly developed in the 1970s and 80s, starting with a large country club and then with it being surrounded by large houses. This place was for wealthy folks early on and it still is today. To the left here is the Oxmoor Farm, which was listed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1976. You can't see the house from this road, but the estate and the farm was built by Alexander Bullitt, who became the first lieutenant governor of Kentucky in the year 1800. The farm stayed with the Bullitt family for five generations. In the beginning of this video, I mentioned how there's only one Apple store in all of Kentuckiana. I've lived in a metro area that has had only one Apple store to serve the population before, and it's no fun whenever I had to go. Well, then stop buying Apple products. Shut up, go away. Anyway, the Apple store is located here at Oxmoor Center, which along with Mall St. Matthews on the other side of the Waterson Expressway, makes up what many people would consider to be the nicest shopping area in the Louisville metro area. Oxmoor Center opened in February of 1971, and today it's doing pretty well as far as indoor malls go.
Despite popular belief, most metro areas that are of decent size have at least one indoor shopping mall that still does really well. Nonetheless, I do end the video here. If you enjoy this video, make sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already, as doing all of those things helps these videos destroy the evil monster that is the YouTube algorithm. Also make sure to hit that notification bell so that you can be notified every time that I upload a new video. If you enjoyed this video, then you might enjoy checking out some of the featured playlists on this channel. Videos with amazing insights on other places like what you saw here can be found in my Kentucky playlist or in my Louisville playlist. Last but not least, if you can't get enough of me on here, you can always go follow me on my other social media accounts, and those links are below. We'll see you next time. Peace.